to a story nearly a quarter century in the making. It's the story of Barton McNeil, convicted in 1999 of murdering his daughter. He claims he's innocent, says he has the evidence to prove it, and he'll get the chance to begin doing so tomorrow in court. His story now from our reporter, Austin Schick. Barton McNeil currently calls the walls of the Pickneyville Correctional Center home for a crime he says he'd never commit, serving year 23 of a life sentence for murdering his own daughter. This story begins June 16, 1998. Early that morning, McNeil's three-year-old daughter, Christina, died. This is my only photograph, my actual photograph that I have of my daughter. Police investigated McNeil's apartment on Evans Street in Bloomington, and the toddler's death was originally ruled suffocation. But as McNeil took a closer look at the room, you can actually see this thing is actually bent, it's unlatched, you can see sunlight coming through the bottom here. This is Intruder Evidence 101. After finding the room in disarray, McNeil called police back to the scene, but he never thought they'd pin the crime on him. McNeil claims crime scene investigators missed crucial evidence. How do you not see that there are two holes in opposite corners of the screen immediately below the latch release pull tabs? And they said, there's no intruder evidence, that's BS. This window was not in this condition when I put Christina to bed that night. A day later, McNeil was arrested. A year later, he was convicted of murder. Since then, Barton McNeil has claimed his innocence, pinning the crime on his ex-lover. It had to be my son. I mean, nobody else had it out for me. Nobody else had it out for Christina. Nobody else had it out for Christina's mother, who Masuk loathed. That Masuk is Masuk Nallen. Bart had broken things off with her the night before Christina's murder. McNeil says police never investigated Masuk outside of one police interview. So why is he convinced she could be the cold-blooded killer? Her arrest and conviction for battering her daughter two months after my arrest. I mean, if that didn't speak to who was responsible for Christina's murder, I don't know what else what did. What we have in this case is a classic example more so of tunnel vision, where the detectives and police zeroed in on a suspect right away and may not have investigated others as closely as they should have. But it's what Masuk did in 2011 that leaves McNeil and others even more convinced she is Christina's killer. I open the envelope and I pull out a photocopy of the Bloomington Panograph front page, and there's Masuk's picture. And I'm like, oh my God. The front page reading, woman charged in slaying. Now Lin, now with the last name Wang, charged with killing her mother-in-law. She was found guilty in 2013. Very few people are capable of cold-blooded murder. I like to think anyway. We know Masuk can kill, that she can kill with her bare hands. So that has to make people look back at this and think there's at least a possibility that she could have been involved in Christina's death. Now McNeil's fight for innocence is winning support. He's now represented by the Illinois Innocence and Illinois Exoneration Projects. I was elated, of course. They screen their cases so well and they go through them so thoroughly that they don't take marginal cases. They only take the cases where they personally are convinced the person is factually innocent. At a May 12th hearing, McNeil's attorneys will argue newly found DNA evidence makes his case for innocence and for Mazook's guilt. Not one hair from me was found anywhere on the bed sheet or anywhere. Yet the lone hair that whose origin has been identified originated from Masuk. Couple that fact with Mazuk's conviction and evidence showing his daughter was not sexually assaulted prior to her death, and McNeil believes it packs a powerful one-two punch proving his innocence. Why is this not true? Is that something you would ever do to your daughter? Of course you? not. I've never, I've never seen an image of child pornography. I think the whole thing is abhorrent. Almost none of the attorneys involved in McNeil's prosecution would comment on these latest developments. The only one who would, state's attorney Mary Call believes most of McNeil's claims claims are either inconclusive as evidence or just not material to the case. And McNeil is expected to appear in court on May 12th at 1.30 at the McLean County Law and Justice Center in front of a judge with his attorneys present. For now in Pickneyville, I'm Austin Schick.